Chapter 10, One Crazy Summer, The Breakfast Program. We found the center like Cecile said we would. A line of hungry kids waited for breakfast, except they weren't all black. There were older teens in mostly black clothes and afros, posted like soldiers, guarding the outside. That hardly seemed necessary when a white and black police car circled the block. Just want to point out, that's a really good um, clue as to what how the, the outside organizations, the police, um, viewed the Black Panther program. Veneta was already smiling and showing anyone who'd look her way that she was worth a smile back. She had picked out three girls who looked alike enough to be sisters, each one as thick as my sisters and I were lanky. They wore white boots and daisy dresses with flared sleeves. They might as well be going to a go-go, not a free breakfast. I kept Fern near, my arms crossed before me. I was here to make sure my sisters and I eat breakfast and to stay out of Cecile's hair. If Veneta wanted to get her feelings hurt chasing after smiles and go-go boots, that was on her. The Panthers opened the doors and we trailed inside, the three of us sticking close together. As we entered, I deal did what Cecile said. I handed the box to the first Black Panther I saw and said, this is from Cecile. I wasn't about to call her some name I didn't know or tell them she said to leave her alone. The Black Panther guy opened the box. He took out a sheet from a stack of paper, a flyer with a crouching Black Panther and some writing on it and held it up to examine it. He nodded, thank you, sister, and took the box with him. So that's another note. That is what they were asking for her to do, create some sort of flyer for the Black Panthers. The three girls in the flower dresses were standing in line looking at us. Veneta tried to steer me over to them, but I didn't want to go chasing after them. Their dresses looked so nice and new. We wore shorts and sun tops, although Oakland wasn't as sunny as we'd imagined California to be. I found us a place in, online behind Puerto Ricans who didn't look Puerto Rican, but who spoke Spanish. Then I remembered our study of the 50 states. They were probably Mexicans. I thought Black Panthers would only look out for Black people, but there were two Mexicans, a little white boy, and a boy who looked bo both Black and Chinese. Everyone else was Black. I'd never seen the Black Panthers making breakfast on the news. But then, beating eggs never makes the evening news. As we stood on line, a guy who should have kept walking stopped right in front of us. He crossed his arms and looked down at Fern. I recognized the beakish nose on that narrow face. He was the one in the telephone booth who had turned his back to us like he didn't want to be seen. For all I knew, he was one of those in the Black Berets and Afros who'd come knocking on Cecile's door last night. Now he stood across from Fern, his legs apart and his arms folded. What is wrong with this picture? He stated instead of asked. He knew the answer all right. I was pretty good at reading faces. He didn't have a leather jacket, but he was one of them. On his black t-shirt was a dead white pig with flies buzzing around it and said the words off the pig in white letters. His hair was a big loose afro because it was a little stringy, stringy like Lucy Rallies who bragged about being part Chickasaw in the fourth grade. But by fifth grade was singing I'm black and I'm proud louder than loud because James Brown's song had made it the thing to do. The stringy afro wearing beak man wasn't popper grown or Cecile grown. Probably all of 19 or 20, but he thought he was something. He was putting on a show for all the other black beret wearers. When none of us spoke, he pointed and asked again the question whose answer he already knew. What's wrong with this picture? Fern pointed back at him and said, I don't know, what's wrong with this picture? The other Black Panthers laughed and told Fern, that's right, little sis, don't take nothing from no one. And they slapped palms and said stuff like, these are, these are sister and Zillas, all right, look at them. Beakman tried to stand up to to his humiliation, to shake it off. Little sis, are you a white girl or a black girl? Fern said, I'm a color girl. He didn't like the sound of color girl. He said, black girl. Fern said, colored, black girl. Vanetta and I threw our colored on top of Ferns like we were ring tossing at Coney Island. This was bigger than say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. If one of us said color, we all said color, unless we were fighting among ourselves. All right then, color girls. Big Beak said, why are you carrying that self-hatred around in your arms? 
the older teenage girl in the Cal State t-shirt said, Kelvin, you're crazy. Leave those colored girls alone. Big beak, stringy hair, Kelvin looked pleased with himself. I said, that's not self-hatred, that's her doll. Yeah, a doll baby, Miss Patty Cake. In spite of the Cal State girl and the other Black Panther saying, leave those girls alone, he went on. Are your eyes blue like hers? Is your hair blonde like hers? Is your skin white like hers? The girl said again, crazy Calvin, stop it, just stop it. Crazy Calvin turned to a lady who wore an African print dress and a matching cloth wrapped around her head. Sister Mukumbu, our colored girls here need some re-education. And he walked away, one of those pimp walks, like, how do you like me now? Sister Mukumbu just smiled at him like she didn't take Crazy Calvin seriously. She and the Cal State girl exchanged a look. The Cal State girl tor- turned towards me and said, don't mind Crazy Calvin. That's what we call him. He's a little wild. For all that, the eggs were cold, but we ate them, along with the butter toast and orange slices. It was better than eating air sandwiches at Cecile's. Fern hugged Miss Patty Cake, but refrained from putting a piece of toast to her doll's lips, like she would have done at home. Still, the other kids laughed at her and called her white baby lover and big baby, except for the boy who was both colored and Chinese. I told them to shut up. And that went for the three girls in flower dresses, even the tallest one. No one could call Fern white baby lover, even though Miss Patty Cake was a white baby and Fern loved her. No one could call Fern a big baby but Vanetta and me. Vanetta ate her toast silently. We had cost Vanetta her summer friends with the white go-go boots and happening dresses. But I didn't care. Fern could love Miss Patty Cake all she wanted. We could call ourselves vanilla wafers, chocolate chips, or Oreo cookies for all I cared about black girls and color girls. And even though Cecile didn't bother to bring us here or stick up for Fern, the Black Panthers had slapped palms and said, those are Sister and Zilla's all right. So there must be something that they see in the girls that reminds them of Cecile.